and get a uh, second. Hello, hello. There you are. Hi, second. Thank you, Sergio. Uh, moving along with uh, new business, I uh, kind of wanted to turn it over to uh, Misty. Really wanted to just have a quick highlight uh, in regards to where we are. Um, I believe last time we spoke with uh, some of the delinquencies. Um, we've had quite a few accounts now that we've got an expedited process uh, on how quickly we can start turning and uh, starting to collect for past dues. We've got an overall balance of about $72,000 across 89 units. I expect a lot of that to be cleared up. Um, we've had a lot of out-of-state people, a lot of people with the bank transfer. However, we've got a big bulk of units sitting in the 90-day past due that have now been turned over. Uh, Misty, do you want to kind of provide an update on how quickly we're able to turn now? Yeah, so um, what's happening now is once they have those 30 days, they get their first um, letter uh, that the statutory required uh, notice of late assessment. Uh, once that expires at 45 days, then that is turned over to the attorney and they start their process to file a lien with the um, intent to lien letter that goes out. Um, so we did have a slight pause on that at the beginning of the transition because we were allowing people the opportunity to get changed over to the new banking system and sending their coupons and everything to a new place. Um, so did want to mention that you know in July, Yeah, so it's almost been cut in half. Uh, there's uh, one or two specific units that are um, generating the bulk of the past due. Previous management um, and a previous attorney obviously weren't able to expedite things, but um, we now are. So uh, I think that uh, there's going to be a quick turnaround on some of this stuff and um, got a good process in place. And uh, I really got to thank Misty for uh, really kind of Buckling down when it comes to uh, the past two yep. report, uh, which moves me right along on the schedule, or excuse me, on the agenda in regards to uh, our oats filling. Now that we brought it up before as well, uh, we currently are down to 24 total accounts past due uh, for a bulk of about $20,000. Um, still pretty significant. However, we've been making some progress. And we are looking into options about potentially turning over some of this to a collection agency. Um, Can't collect. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we're looking into different options and how we can uh, work through that. Um, but yeah, Misty, uh, what kind of your efforts uh, in regards to uh, kind of sending that out and the association's kind of been paying for a significant amount of money for some of these people here for well over 120 days, some of these years, but they haven't paid their bills. So, so just a reminder, this is an item on your, you'll see it on your budget, and it's on your income um, expense statement. So there is an anticipated amount that's being spent for water and sewer that's filled out. That's been in your budget, and every, and, but there is a separate line item on the income that's the accepted reimbursement that comes from OATS. So that overall is going to reduce your assessments every month because then each individual unit owner is responsible for paying for their portion of the water that they use. Instead of everyone paying a split amount of the overall amount, it's based on usage. Um, typically, it's more fair to do it that way for each resident. We, in the past, obviously, previous budgetary meetings, we did consider that, but we would also be losing the reimbursement for votes. The fees would go up significantly, considering that we would have to anticipate the bulk uh, of what's owed, considering the overall usage, but now we do have three consecutive years of where we've had some sort of better understanding of the overall usage rate here at Beachwalk. So that, that is being looked into as a potential moving in to move these out if we can't start getting these cleaned up. Uh, but obviously that's, just wanted to kind of highlight that as well. Okay, cool. No worries, Jeff. Um, Missy, do you want to kind of talk to you? Uh, we've, been, we've been hearing a, just a bunch of different complaints from different residents, noise complaints, specifically in 4343. Um, regardless of whether it's an AC unit that's too loud, 
Uh, the floors that you kind of want to talk about are uh, the bylaws and how they're set up. Yes, so I have um, <coughs> some information. I'll post it on Town Square just to make it easier for everyone to see regarding two, two sections in the declaration that address ATM flooring. Um, section 1710 talks about the weighted down and other restrictions, and that outlines the requirements for specific flooring in your unit to reduce sound transmission. Um, so I will post all of your details on that. It's supposed to meet a sound transmission classification of 48 um, and have the appropriate insulation in there. Um, I'm sure everyone's aware that the walls are a little bit thin, so having the appropriate flooring in there kind of helps with that. Um, and then section 17.11, um, um, humidification of sand plants and humidity, that talks about the AC requirements um, and that every unit should be kept, whether it's occupied or not, should have it be set at a minimum, or well, maximum 78 degrees. So there shouldn't be any units where people leave or you know they're just not there and they're just turning the air conditioning off. That just cre creates a, an environment for mold to breed. Um, so, and typically most insurance carriers will also deny claims if you don't keep your insurance or your thermostat set around that area. So the CCRs for beach walks actually require a minimum of 78 degrees. So I'll post that on Town Square, but it's in your, the CCRs as well. Perfect. How are you going to enforce that? Do you uh, submit that question? Yeah, Mike. You, you didn't submit so, that yeah, question. So, you know, if there was something that came up, um, we would be able to, if there's, you know, a violation, <laughs> if it was, you know, reported someone left the unit and, and it wasn't, then it would be addressed through the violation process. And if it's not um, rectified through violation and finding, then it would go to the attorney for litigation there. Um, but I'll post all the details on that. Like I said, it's actually in the declarations, which were already there, but just a little snippet just to make sure that everyone's aware. Uh, moving along uh, to the uh, valley trash uh, process, um, we've been getting a bunch of different uh, complaints from the vendor and back and forth from other residents. Please keep in mind that if for some reason your unit is missed or for some reason your package wasn't picked up, something didn't happen, you left some sort of cardboard box, there are certain requirements that valley trash uh, has put in place as the type of bag, the amount of trash that you can leave dumping trash into other people's receptacles, different things like that, or just certain things that we're trying to prevent. Um, Missy, did you want to talk about kind of uh, some of the stuff? I know that they have new management, but some of the things that they've been pointing out. Yeah, there have been some issues. Um, some people have reached out and said, oh, my trash wasn't picked up. Why was it picked up? But then we find that they had an oversized bag or it was overweight or there was a thin bag full of diapers or kitty litter or something like that, that it's really not easy for them to pick that up and move it. It's, things need to be bagged properly. Um, it should be standard household trash in a 13 gallon, like your standard kitchen size trash bag. Um, and then again, if it's, you know, if it's animal waste or um, kitty litter or diapers, um, children's diapers, adult diapers, even they should all be double bagged um, so that they can pick those up safely and not have issues with things leaking down the hallway. And we'll be, uh, should be posted already as far as the trash bag requirements. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Misty. Um, moving along, uh, obviously some business that's come up. We've still been having the same issue coming from building 4323 in regards to different types of things being flushed. We've had some significant issues with the uh, lift station constantly having to get service to the point now where the pumps have now reached the end of their useful life. Um, we looked into multiple different options as to what we should do. Should we just do a quick fix or should we just go ahead and you know replace 20 year old lift station pumps? Uh, board came to a decision and uh, we're gonna be moving forward with some new pumps with the lift station. Uh, can I get a second on that? Second. Uh, no, that was Sergio. Would, would we afford I second. Thank you, Sergio. I second. 
So we'll uh, we'll get going on those um, guys. Please uh, try to refrain uh, from flushing those type of items. I don't really recall that being an issue up until this year. Um, but well, even the, some of the wipes are not supposed to. Yeah, I mean it's obviously there's uh, no clogged toilets now that I think that are um, they've come in over time, but our piping is not made for that yet. So. And even though they say that they're flushable, it's not. Um, well, what we've caught in the, they're, they're actual bags, so it's not, uh, it's not, um, plastic bag. So do we make bids on that or no? I reached out to two other vendors and neither one of them were able to get here in time and we're having to service the, the station B team. Wow. Should be getting three, three bids. It's not required. Waste the money as usual. Um, or, uh, <laughs> the, Okay, thank you. The um, 4311 elevator coil, so there's been some posts. Um, we've done quite a bit of maintenance and repair to this elevator this year. There's been some comments in regards to, uh, should we go ahead and fully renew that elevator? Uh, the board's kind of looked into different options, uh, though they may not seem like they're a long-term option from you know, financial standpoint, it makes more sense to push this out until 2024. Uh, we do have uh, an ongoing reserve study going on. We do have the funds scheduled to be able to modernize the entire elevator. However, we did receive a new quote and we do want to make sure that the amount of modernization that's already gone into that elevator is actually being accounted for. Um, so we will be looking to move forward with something like that come the first, uh, first week probably of the new year. But until now, um, it was operating up until, what, the day before? Yeah, that's when I checked it here in the morning. Um, so we are looking at that. Uh, moving along into the uh, compliance update. We've got a hearing date set uh, for the end of the month. Uh, this month, we had 35 new violation letters that were sent. Currently, there are 38 open total violations. 27 are in stage one, nine in stage two. And there are two units that will be attending the, the uh, hearing. I have now received three different uh, opportunities and uh, what eight, eight weeks to be able to fix what, what's going on in the efficiency and there's still an active violation. Uh, unit 4323, number 205, door color, not had it repainted. March. And uh, unit 4333, number 207, we still have an expired and missing lease. Uh, so with that, I'd like to motion uh, forward to uh, move them over to the uh, hearing at the end of the month. Is that a maximum fine? Yeah, maximum fine. Can I get a second? Second. Thanks, Sergio. Uh, the uh, seawall update, uh, just moving into some old business. Uh, so we should have the remainder of the landscaping. We needed to get a additional valve put back there uh, to make sure that we're hitting all the areas when it comes to the irrigation. Um, I, I think it's gonna look pretty good once it's completed. Uh, what was the uh, completion date on that? Okay, cool. So uh, we should, that literally will complete the, uh, outside of just normal maintenance and uh, change bugs. Change bugs. Change bugs. Change. Uh, outside of that, I mean, we have, uh, we've now completed pretty much all of the uh, major landscaping uh, in Beachwalk. So I, I think we should be good there from a maintenance standpoint moving forward. Um, and then as far as the, uh, that area over there, uh, it should be, pretty much completely buttoned up. You see some of the landscaping has already gone into effect, but um, at least from a, um, at least any grass and everything else, the, the most important part was making sure that we had the correct irrigation prior to, uh, prior to start putting plants and anything else out there. Uh, and then the last thing, uh, as far as the old business, obviously we have motion to move forward with the updated gym equipment. Uh, part of the reserve study, one of the things that got pointed out was uh, trying to align the useful life of all of the major pieces of equipment 
And uh, one of the things that got brought up to our attention was that if we were replacing um, the treadmills, the elliptical and everything else, we might as well look into replacing the uh, stair climber as well due to the useful life. Um, so we went ahead and we, uh, we, we motioned to uh, kind of add that as well into it, um, which wasn't much of an increase, but I think long term uh, will be better so that we have every piece of equipment now kind of bundled in there. We wouldn't have two different uh, broken out pieces. Um, so with that, uh, I'd like to just motion to uh, kind of adjust and add that additional piece. And how quickly is that moving forward with? Um, the uh, return of the signed paperwork and process the deposit, and then we need to reach the grant of the equipment. Okay. So, um, and then just to point out that that is um, commercial grade equipment that we're getting as well, which we just see a lot. Of yeah, we still have the uh, still have the warranty on the equipment, um, and then obviously the existing equipment is still under warranty. So, um, I think it's a good win, good added amenity for those that use it, um, and long term, I think it's better than. And I think we've already gone down that road. But uh, yeah, I'd like to motion to move forward with that as well. Uh, can I get a second? Can you hear me? No, we missed it. Oh, I, I second it. Yeah, I don't know why it's having some connectivity issues over here. Nope. No worries, Sergio. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, any uh, questions that we received ahead of time? I did not receive any specific questions. I did receive um, a note from Michael that he wanted to speak to the other folks about the agenda. No, I already spoke to the agenda. Okay. Uh, how was that? 